Okay, so this is part two uh, in a series where we're describing our ground robot platform. Uh, again, this is meant as both documentation for us later on when we look back on how we implemented things and to help others who want to build similar platforms. So in this case, we're building a ground robot differential drive. And we're going to go over how we implemented each part. So in our first video, which there'll be a link below to, we went over the actual hardware of, and you can see uh, uh, this is where we explained it, of how everything's uh, hooked up together. In this video, we're gonna go over the software. So the overview of this video is explained right here. Uh, we're gonna explain how we're controlling our motors. So the high level idea of how we're doing it, and then we're gonna get into the actual software implementation. The first thing we need to do to control motors is to know how fast the motors are currently spinning. Uh, to do this, we're using an encoder. So the motors are hooked up uh, to an encoder. Maybe I can show you quick what that looks like. This little black cap here on each motor is an encoder, and it has a wire. I don't know if you can see it. You can see one of them here. These wires come out of the encoders, and these encoders are what's called quadrature encoders. And the TIVA, so this little red board that we're using uh, has what's called a quadrature encoder interface and we'll link to uh, a documentation that explains that. But in essence, it basically lets us back out the direction and speed which the encoder puts out. So we, know, we now know in our encoder task, which, re which reads in this encoder signal, the direction and speed uh, of each motor. The second thing we need to do in order to control our motors is we need to know the difference between the current speed and the desired speed. So we'll get to this in a second. We have a higher level controller telling us how fast uh, we want each motor to be going. And we know how fast we're going. So we know the difference. And we need to know how to get to the desired speed. And this is where the low level controller comes in. And this happens in our controller task, which we'll get into uh, soon. The we're using a very uh, simple controller here. It's a combination of a feed-forward controller. So we've characterized our motors, and we have, a pro we have an idea of what voltage we need to give to go a certain speed. And to hold that speed and get to that certain speed, we have feedback on the encoders. And it, it's a PID controller. Um, ba -ba -ba. So then we need to tell the motors to go this speed. Uh, and that's what our motor driver does. So our motor write tasks tells our motor driver, so this comes with an interface, uh, to output a certain voltage uh, to, for it to go a certain speed. And in our last video, we go over how we actually do that, all the way up to how it's all wired up. Okay? Then we uh, need to find out how fast we should be going. So. Uh, we have a higher level controller on a laptop, or in our case, an onboard uh, note by Intel. This is our high level controller, and via your interface, uh, we, get, uh, we get a directive of how fast we want each motor to be going. Okay, so we already kind of went over this with the ordering of how things happen. Right? We have the encoder task, reads in the encoder signal. Uh, if there's a quadrature encoder, we get direction and speed. We come to the control task. We have how fast we're going in each motor, how fast we want each motor to be going from the message task. Uh, and we have the control hooked up. And to actually control the motors, our motor write task uh, takes in the signal, outputs a signal via the interface that this motor driver comes with, uh, and uh, outputs a voltage to tell the motors how fast to go. Now we're gonna go into the actual software implementation of how we do this. We've written out the kind of abbreviated tree structure of the important files uh, that makes this happen. You'll notice it's pretty, everything's mapped pretty uh, easily. So when you download the, when you go to Git and, and pull this repo, you're gonna find that uh, the, the meat of it is in ground robot slash motor controller slash source. And in tasks, you can, you can see it's pretty simple, right? Motor write task uh, .cpp and HPP, right? Corresponds to the motor write task here. Control task, you can see there, 
and so on. And a lot of these are supporting files uh, that we use. We're not going to go too deep into it right now. Uh, we're just going to kind of give a high level overview of, of how we actually work this. So now we're going to actually go into, uh, we're going to look at the code. Uh, and Clark here, I'll just show you in a sec, is going to show you. And we'll, we'll, we want to give you a gist of how things are happening. We're not going to go too deep, but we'll try and give you uh, an idea of what's going on. So why don't we take a look? Say hello, Clark. All right. Yo. Okay. All right, so upon downloading the Git repo, uh, just a couple things you have to do before you can get your hands dirty with the code. Uh, there's some instructions in a readme which tells mm -hmm. you what to install to be able to compile uh, the, our code, and then what to change in our make file, which is how we build the code, to actually get it to build. OK. So now we'll dig into the code. As Max explained earlier, uh, the software is responsible for four main things. And we implement these things as tasks. And what a task is is a function that runs at a specified frequency that the motor controller calls. Uh, so looking at a task, they are all located, when you download it, in the ground robot, which is our root directory, motor controller, source, tasks. And we'll just take a look at control task right now. And each task, you'll see it will have at least two functions, one that is an initialization function, which basically sets up all the variables that you might want to use in the task, and then a function that gets called at a specified frequency. OK, so this is the .hpp file, and here is the .cpp file for the control task. You can see that in the control task, it sets up uh, some gains for the PID controller. And then in the control task itself, uh, I won't go too deep into this. You'll just see it, it does exactly what Max had said before. It calculates a feed forward term, calculates a PID term, adds them together, thresholds to make sure it's a valid value. And here's uh, an important part. It sets a variable in the state. And what state is, is located in source uh, core state.hpp. It's merely a variable that all the tasks can access, and that's how they communicate with each other. So in this case, you can see that it's setting the output PWM variable, which will be read in later by the motor controller, and that will uh, set the desired PWM and all of that jazz. OK. Um, all the other tasks are fairly straightforward, with the exception of messaging task, which I will not get into the details of here, but we'll link to a document in the comment below. Uh, OK, let's a, take a look at the main file. So we've talked about tasks. We've talked about uh, what they are and that they run at a specified frequency. We'll just briefly go over how they're uh, run. So this is the main file that runs. And you can see here at the bottom, we initialize all the tasks calling those uh, functions you saw earlier. And then you see something called scheduler, and we're adding these tasks into the scheduler. And what the scheduler does in our system is it ensures that each task is run at the frequency you specify it as. So you can see that most of our tasks are run at 100 hertz, uh, with the exception of a couple. And we'll just dig a little bit into scheduler. Here we go. Uh, it's a simple loop that just has a timer. And for each task, it calculates the time remaining, uh, and it sleeps for that duration if it's uh, not reached the frequency or it goes on to the next task in this given loop. So it's a fairly simple thing that we have set up. OK, uh, and that's all I want to talk about in the software overview. OK, so we mentioned a couple documents, uh, and we'll put links to those documents. Hopefully, this video gave uh, an idea, oh, this going. an idea of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, and Next, uh, we'll go, in, go into at how we're actually setting up our platform. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to hit every uh, part in the series. And I hope that it's useful for us when we look back on it, and also for other people if they're going to build similar platforms.